and I am Campus Innovation Lead at Bongo Hive. What this means is that I'm responsible for developing, implementing, and supporting all of our student-focused and student-led programming at Bongo Hive. Today, I'm so excited because we have our very first webinar that's targeted at students. And for this, we have Tafadzwa Bete Sasa, who is a high performance coach, a facilitator, and consultant. And her work involves designing and facilitating tools, systems, and programs that help teams and individuals to achieve their goals and accelerate their growth and success. I feel like this is great because for a first session, it helps us to align. Um, I love that today we're talking about new strategies. So we all have goals and we're thinking about what's going to happen, whether we're in first year to fourth, to fourth year, and we're thinking about what's going to happen next, especially in the time of COVID and beyond. And so Tafazo is just going to take us through what these goals are and what our new strategies can be during this time. Now, before I bring um, Tafadwa in, as this is our first session, I thought that I should share with you a little bit more about Bongo Hive X, why we exist. Um, and so I'm going to do that now. So at Bongo Hive, our tagline and what we believe in is that we work with great minds building viable solutions that change the world. And so we believe that bringing together people like uh, Tafadzwa and the different entrepreneurs and stakeholders that we have with our community, within our community, we come together and we build viable solutions that change the world. As Bongo Hive, we have several programs that we run throughout the year that are targeted at building the ecosystem around entrepreneurship, technology, and innovation. And within that, we have Bongo Hive X, which is focused on student-led innovation. It is our flagship program that propels student-led innovation, and it seeks to be the ultimate platform for students to contribute to solving socioeconomic challenges and realizing their entrepreneurial potential. We work with students to develop critical analysis and so solution development skills for problems around them through human-centered design as well as research and development. We collaborate with academia, corporates, nonprofit organizations, government, entrepreneurs, and society. So in this case, you see that's why we have Tafadzwa here um, as an expert in her field as an, and as an entrepreneur, speaking about her experiences and speaking about what we can do to develop new strategies towards our goals. So X exists to build skills in human-centered design. This is all thinking towards students. It builds skills in critical thinking, skills to champion SDGs for society, and in the coming webinars, you'll see a lot more of that. It builds marketplace readiness. So for the students among us that have started a business or are running a business, it helps you to think through, how do I enter the marketplace? How do I expand my business beyond campus? Um, thinking about employment, are you ready to be employed? So we'll tackle some of these conversations during our webinars. Research methodology, we all know we have to do our research, we have our projects and things like that. So how do you think about this? How do you think about the problems that exist and how they need to be solved? You'll be exposed to local and global challenges as well as solutions. Um, it provides accelerated exposure to varied industries and disciplines. You'll get mentorship for some of you that, for example, connect with Tafadzwa beyond this webinar. You get some 
mentorship from leading experts in their fields and you become part of a student leader community so um during Tafadzwa session, I'll share with you a few links um, so you can connect with Tafadzwa, but you can also join our student community that's on WhatsApp and on Don Slack. So we are building a community of student leaders, of problem solvers, and we hope that you will join us. Our philosophy is that we are obsessed with understanding tomorrow's problems and challenges. We believe in failing and failing fast so that you're not in your business for five years before you understand what the real problems are. We believe that all ideas are worth exploring and we believe in open innovation and in the coming sessions we will discuss this a lot more. And we believe in the untapped potential of students and your ability to solve the world's most pressing socioeconomic challenges. And on that note, I thank you for joining us. I ask that you mute your mic like I, I shared with you in your... Um, in the email that I sent prior to this session. And if you have any questions for Tafadzwa while she's presenting, I ask that you share them in the comments section. So just type out your question for her. It's going to be quite an interactive session. So please put those down in the, in the comment section. Tafadzwa, now I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Kai. Thank you for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. Um, super excited to be here today and looking forward to this session. So in a minute, I'm going to introduce myself in a bit more detail. But what I'm going to ask you guys to do is, I want to know who I'm also talking to. So if you look on your screen, there is a chat option. I would like you to comment in the chat section, introduce yourself, tell us your name, tell us your location in terms of what city or country you are in, and tell us your level of education. So are you in high school, are you in college, or are you postgraduate? This will help me to ensure that as I share my content throughout this session, I'm customizing it to ensure that I know who I'm speaking to and what's relevant to you. So Bob, I see Bob has already shared. Uh, Bob, I'm looking forward to hearing which location you are from and what level of school you are in. So now I'm going to go into my presentation, but so I'm going to do my introduction, then I will come back. So please keep typing your, your comments because I'll come back to, to just go through all of that. So now going into today's presentation, I will start by I will start the presentation by introducing myself what it is that I do and an overview of what it is that we are going to cover today so like Sekai said my name is Tafadzwa Ete Sasa tends to be a bit of a mouthful sometimes but um, that's what happens when your parents are very excited to have you they name you Tafadzwa which means you've made us happy I am Usually when I am on international platforms, I usually say I'm a Zimbabwean from Zambia. Um, you can decode that however you want to. Um, and I am a, a very excited and proud member of the Bongo Hive community. Uh, professionally, I'm a high performance coach, trainer, and a speaker, which basically means that a lot of my work evolves around helping people to clarify exactly what it is that they want in their lives create a game plan on how they are going to achieve that, work that plan and ensure that they actually achieve their goals, but more importantly, sustain those goals. I am the managing consultant of Go Greta Consultancy, where we provide training, coaching and consulting um, to help organizations and teams to also set, pursue and achieve their goals. I am a work in progress, which means that no matter how far I've come, I am always, always trying to be better than the person that I was yesterday. I'm always trying to do better than I did the last time. And I'm always looking, and my friends will tell you that all oh, a lot of my conversations are about the things that I'm thinking about of how I can be better in all the different places that I am in. And the last thing that I'm going to share with you guys is that I have chronic wanderlust. I love to go. I, I, I love to wander off and COVID has just made my life really difficult because not only are we social distancing and I'm feeling stuck at home, but I really can't go anywhere outside of where I am. I love hugs and hot chocolate. 
So once again, I'm suffering because I'm unable to hug people. Um, and I do enjoy books and podcasts. And this might appear a bit random. But there's a reason that I'm introducing myself in all of these ways. Because I want, one of the things that I always want people to understand is that you are a dynamic person, right? And as human beings, sometimes we get into spaces where we can become very obsessed with the one thing that is currently happening to us, with the one area of our life that is currently experiencing a challenge. And the rest of our lives might begin like it's starting to crumble because of all of these things that are happening. But what I believe in and what I would, the first thing that I would encourage you to think about and take away from today's session is understanding that you're a complex human being with so many life areas, with so many dynamics, with so many other critical elements that describe who you are. So as you go through this period, I would encourage you to begin thinking around how am, how does what's currently happening, it's obviously affecting your schoolwork, but when you begin to zone out, to zoom out beyond the fact that you're just a student who's no longer able to go to school, you are able to now see everything else that's happening around you. You're able to see how else this COVID situation is impacting you and Today's session is going to be about how do we deal with a smaller picture of, yes, this is currently happening to me, but then begin to zoom out to then be able to say, okay, how is this affecting other areas of my life and how do I leverage that? So this is a bit of an introduction about me. And now I'm going to quickly come back to, I'm going to quickly come back and check in the chat box so that I have a better understanding of who else is logged in so that I can know who I'm talking to and I can customize my content accordingly. So who do we have on the room? We have Chansa. So we have Kezia, Bob, Rhoda, studying economics, Twalumba, uh, starting uni in August, Tari from the Middle East. Hey, Tari. Uh, we have Chimwemwe, undergrad in Zambia, Chansa, final year, um, Doro, the third year economics, Mwiza in Solwezi, third year Elizabeth Funda Funda, Mungaila is in Lusaka Charity, is studying at Sika, studying marketing, and Mambwe, a fourth year student. So thank you for sharing this because now I have a good understanding of the fact that a lot of the people who are actually here are people who are in university. Um, and we do have Twalumba who's going to start here university. So that helps me in terms of understanding the scope that I'm going to cover. So uh, throughout the presentation, I'm going to be asking you guys several questions and I will appreciate um, being able to hear back from you. So when I ask a question, I do appreciate and I, 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 I find it useful for me to hear your responses. Sekai is going to be sharing your responses with me because currently I'm also looking at the presentation that you're looking at. So that will help me with the engagement. So what are we going to cover today? I want to start this from an angle of just addressing COVID-19. And for a lot of people, COVID-19 has been, the reality of COVID-19 has been the fact that we currently have this disease that is going around the world that is infecting so many people and it has killed some people um, and it has created that level of uncertainty and the fact that we are dealing with a pandemic. But on the other side, the response is that the, that the world has created to responding to COVID has created even more uncertainty, right? Because now schools have started to close, churches are closed, people are social distancing, people aren't able to go out. So I want us to remember that in COVID-19, we're dealing with a health pandemic, which means that there's a concern about our health and likely our livelihood, but there's also just the reality of the uncertainty of there are so many things that are no longer certain around our lives due to this health situation that is going on in the world. So just unpacking and understanding that we are definitely going through difficult times. So like I said earlier, this presentation is pretty much about setting the tone of as Bongo Hive is starting to roll out the Bongo Hive X webinars um, and as we navigate COVID-19, which we have no idea how it's going to end, and how long it's going to be. Today's session is about empowering you with some tools and perspectives and knowledge of how do you navigate this period, but more importantly, how do you leverage this period? Because when we started the year, 
we had goals and for you guys i'm sure a lot of your goals were around academic it was things that you're going to do whilst you were going to school whilst you were in school and making progress with the various years that you were studying we had goals that we had set based on another ordinary year where we are working as normal school is going on as normal um our parents like everything was certain but now covid has come through and there's so much uncertainty around it so in this session really it's a tone setting session it's a perspective shifting session it's about how are we thinking about covid how are we handling this scenario so that we now get to a place where we are able to leverage every opportunity that is in this season because i know that there are challenges but in every challenge comes an opportunity and if we are intentional to find those opportunities then and only then are we able to leverage it so Part of the opportunities that you have in this season are these Bongo Hive X webinars. But I also want you to look um, beyond just this Bongo Hive X webinars to get yourself into your mind frame of how do I leverage all of the opportunities that are in this season. So I believe that there are four elements or four main things that a person can be worried about or a person has to deal with when it comes to periods of uncertainty and crisis. And the first thing is what might happen. The second thing is what has already happened? How is it impacting me? And how do I cope with it? The third thing is what is no longer possible because of everything that's happening around me? And how do I deal with that? And the last thing that I'm going to talk about is what is still possible? What can still happen in this period? And how do I leverage that? So now let's get into it. I don't know about you guys, but personally for me, one of my biggest concerns around COVID was the what ifs, right? The fears and the anxieties. And for me, for a long time, I was worried about COVID, but I didn't spend time unpacking what exactly I was worried about, right? So for for a period of time, I just started to feel really discouraged and I felt scared and I felt anxious, but I didn't know what exactly I was worried about. So now we're going to start with our questions. I'm going to share what I was worried about happening during COVID. And I want some of you to share what are some of your own fears and insecurities, right? So when I eventually sat down and thought about it, my personal biggest fear around COVID-19 was death. What if COVID impacted my life to an extent that there would be a death? Either my death or the death of somebody who I really, really love. And for before I unpacked that, I was just in this space where I was afraid and I was anxious and I was nervous. But I couldn't do anything about it because I didn't know what I was afraid of. So the first step when you are in a crisis is the ability to clarify and clearly identify and voice your fears. So, and I'm going to sort of walk you guys through how I've been dealing with COVID up to today, right? So I had that scenario of like, what if, what if I die? What if somebody I love dies? But I had not expressed it. So it was just something that was hanging in the back of my head, something that was making it difficult for me to get up and do all of the things that I wanted to do. And something that I, I, I it was a legitimate fear, but I hadn't formalized it. So when it comes to dealing with your fears and anxieties, the first step is clearly identify and say out your fears. Now, because we are all sitting in different spaces, I know that our fears are different and I'm going to throw my first challenge at you in this webinar. What is your biggest fear around COVID-19? And I know that some people are feeling a bit vulnerable, but the beauty of this is that we are creating a space in Bongo Hive X where we are going to work with each other throughout this COVID-19 phase. So I'm challenging and daring some of us, what is your biggest fear around COVID-19? Why it helps you to clarify your fear is that once I knew that I was afraid about death, I was then able to go and talk to somebody about it and explore what the different possibilities are. So what I did is I went and I spoke to my best friend, Ruth. And I remember that I went to see Ruth a day after her birthday. And when I saw her, I just literally started crying because that's how scared I was. And I had never really 
interrogated death my whole life. Right now I'm 30 years old and I've lived with the fear of death, but I've never actually had a conversation about it. And when I traced it, I realized that it started from a very young age. My fear of death and the whole death situation started when I was in high school because I was in boarding school. And whenever they came to take somebody from boarding school, they usually came to pick up people at night. I don't know why they do that. But like if somebody's parents died, they would come and pick them up in the middle of the night. And that spooked the life out of me. I became very scared of like, what if my parents die and then nobody's there to take care of me and all of these things. It was a legitimate fear. But now I'm at a place in my life where I don't really need my parents to pay school fees for me, right? But it's still a valid fear. The dynamics have shifted a bit. So the first thing when it comes to dealing with uncertainty and situations where you don't know what might happen, for some of you, I suspect that, um, and I'm going to ask, Sekai, has anybody been brave enough yet to share some of their fears in the chat section? Uh, Tariro has just shared... Um, as well as Rhoda. So Tariro Dokas Matibiri says her biggest fear is not being able to go back home to be with my family, missing out on the sounds of laughter, the sugarcane gatherings, the small genuine things, and even worse, losing any of those people and not being able to, bur to bury them. Rhoda right. Kakoma says her biggest fear is around this pandemic um, and not being able to, and not completing my degree with the same capacity I would have without the crisis. Bob says, the fear of me and my family being hit financially. Right. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you so much, you guys, for sharing. And that is a real fear that we have right now, right? What it helps us when we know the things that we're really afraid of is that it empowers us to make certain decisions, right? Um, and I will and I'll go back to my story and share how that looked like for me. So I realized that part of why COVID was really freaking me out about death was because I'm asthmatic and a lot of people in my family are asthmatic. And some of the research has been showing that people who have hereditary chronic conditions around their respiratory issues like asthma are likely to really struggle with COVID. So I knew, now I knew that I was afraid of death. I was afraid of my own death because I knew that because of my asthma, I have a risk, a greater risk of catching the, the disease and it actually killing me. Once I was clear on that, I was able to do a number of things. Number one, I was finally able to face death. What is it that I fear so much about death? And I realized that part of it was economic conditions, right? When I started, when I was young, I was afraid of like, if my parents die, nobody's going to be able to pay my fees for me, right? But when I was able to clarify my fears, I was now able to decide what I can do about it. So a day after that, I went out, I got a lot of asthma medication, I got a lot of flu medicine, I got a lot of painkillers. I stopped some in my house, I sent some to my parents, and I started to do things that were going to enable me to make sure that as much as I can, I still protect my family, right? So unpacking and clearly stating what you're afraid of empowers you to understand and begin to take action. Now we all know that if we wash our hands, we reduce our risk of COVID. Now we know that if we practice social distancing, we reduce our risks of getting COVID. But what was more important for me was beginning to get the information of, if I do get COVID, then what do I do? Getting the numbers of the places that I could call to get COVID. And then I got into the fear of, how do they test for COVID? Where are people being treated? Being able to articulate your fears when you're uncertain empowers you to find the right information and take the right action. So that is the first bit that I want us to cover today. There is a lot of things that are happening around us, but how do we begin to take our power to say, so what can I actually do about this? But you're only able to do that if you are clear on this is my fear, right? So for the people who shared, like Dorothy shared, like Tari shared that the fear of not being able to go home one of the things that I personally learned and decided to do was as much as I can, I will now call all the people that I love every single day. So I hear their voices. I can't control if they die, but if they die, I at least want to know that I called them as much as I could now. I heard their voices, I saw their faces, and I was there for them as much as possible. So this is the first thing. In period of uncertainty, and I would challenge you to say at any point in your life, even when you think about this from exam fear, right? For some of you, when it comes to exam time, you get anxious, you get uncertain. 
What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of failing my exam. Once you know that you're afraid of failing your exam, you are now able to say, I might fail my exam if I haven't studied enough. So now I need to study as much as I can before the exam. Unpacking your fears enables you to take action as much as you can within your control. Now the second thing, which is releasing what is no longer possible. So there are things that might happen, which we don't know if they're going to happen. But the second element that we are dealing with is things that have actually already happened. So for example, I know that a lot of people have closed school, right? Schools are closed. That's happened. You can't go to school anymore. No matter how eager you were to finish your program or start your program, there are things that are just no longer possible. So how do you deal with the things that are beyond your control and that are no longer possible? Firstly, once again, I'm sure by now you're hearing that I'm big on clarity. I believe that it's empowering for us to be very clear on what it is that we are dealing with. So once again, when it comes to the things that are no longer possible for you, identify what has already happened that has been difficult or unpleasant. So for people whose schools have closed, you can't continue with your schoolwork. You can't attend classes. You can't attend lectures. It means your progress has been delayed a bit. For some people, and I, I wonder if this is like, is an African thing that we do, where when things are difficult, sometimes we don't acknowledge that they are difficult, but we just find other ways of coping with it without actually talking about what it is that is happening, right? The people who are able to transcend challenges are the people who are also able to say, I'm really sad right now that school is closed, right? Because that then empowers you. And to, later on in the webinar, I'm going to talk about how do you then find possibilities and opportunities with it. Articulate what you miss or what you're struggling with the most, right? For some people who were probably living in Resi, this means that you're probably, uh, you probably had to go back home or whatever the case might be. Whenever things change, it's important for you to once again clarify this is what happened. School is now closed. It's been difficult for me because I had planned my life so that by the end of this year, I would have graduated, right? Then for things that are no longer possible, they're hard, but most important thing to do is to accept. Accept that the season is going to be difficult and promise yourself that you will do your best under the circumstances. It's hard. School is closed. There's nothing anybody can do about it. There are difficulties and challenges that are coming with it. But the thing is, you can tell yourself that this is beyond me. No amount of worrying, complaining is going to help this. If anything, worrying and complaining about it is going to make you unhealthy, unfit, sad, angry, and just cultivate a negative environment around you. So accept it. Accept the fact that, once again, due to conditions beyond your control, school is closed. All of these difficult things that are happening are happening but accept it because there is nothing that you can do to change it. So for the things you can't change, accept them and promise yourself and commit to yourself that you will do your best under the circumstances. I'm not saying don't complain if you're having a bad day. I'm just saying that, yes, you have bad days, but try to find good days somewhere along the way. So that is the second thing. Unpack your anxieties so that you can make a plan for the things that might happen. Number two, Release what is no longer possible. Accept that there are things that are just not happening right now. But say to yourself, this is life. This is happening. I can't change anything about it. But I can decide to be more positive and more constructive and see how I can get the best out of the situation. The third set of things is things that you can renegotiate. And I'm go and the, the rest of this webinar and what we're going to cover now is about how do I leverage on the things that can be done differently, right? So some things might not happen the way that you imagine them, but they can still happen differently, right? So for example, somebody might have been supposed to graduate this year. Does it mean you're never graduating? No, it just means you're graduating at a later stage. Somebody was supposed to start school now. Does it mean you're never starting school? No, it just means that it's going to happen at a different point. So the third step is to understand and identify what just needs to happen in a different way or form. And I'll share this with you guys. For me and my line of work, I mentioned that I do trainings. One of the biggest hits and one of the biggest things that shocked me when, when, when all of this started was when the government said you can't have large gatherings. 
I do trainings. I do trainings in person. All things being equal, we would have been meeting somewhere. We would have been bongo hive eggs would have been happening in a lecture hall in some school somewhere, right? Does that mean that bongo hive can no longer create the space for you guys to learn things? No, they can't hold gatherings in your school, but they can still give you information, right? In my case, I could no longer hold the trainings that I'd planned to hold with my clients. But does that mean I can't still share information and knowledge with people? No, I can still share knowledge. I can still support people. It's just now happening differently from how I imagined it. If there was no COVID, what would have been happening right now is a smaller group of the people on this platform would have been physically meeting in another room somewhere. But guess what? The person who's joining us from Sulawesi and the person who's joining us from um, the East wouldn't have been able to do it. So in any situation, there are things that might not happen the way that we planned them, but they're going to happen a bit differently. And for those things, you renegotiate. You renegotiate and you say to yourself, I was supposed to do this, but because of this, it's no longer possible that way. It will not be the same way, but I could still do this this way, right? So I'll give like, so those are the two, the two, two examples that I've given you, right? For me and my business, I was supposed to hold time management trainings in person, but because of social distancing, it's no longer possible that way. It will not be the same, but I could still hold my sessions online, right? So that renegotiation of saying, this was plan A, that plan A is no longer possible, doesn't mean we are writing out the whole year. I, I'm very touched about people who have been saying 2020 is finished. I'm like, no, I'm here for every single day of 2020 that's still here because I have a chance of renegotiating all of these things. I have a chance of doing these things very differently. So challenge number two for you today, looking at how COVID has affected, particularly your schoolwork, right? Particularly your plans. What can you renegotiate with yourself at this point? What could your plan B look like in this season? So challenge number two, in the chat section, what are some of the things that you have had to renegotiate with yourself? Or if you hadn't thought about it or you hadn't started it, what are some of the things that you can now renegotiate with yourself to ensure that they still happen, though they are happening differently, they are still happening in a different form, in a different shape, maybe at a different time, but for sure, it's still possible and you can still do it. So I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds to type in the chat section. What are some of the things that you're having to renegotiate? But you can also, if you can't think of anything you need to renegotiate, what are some of the things that you've had to release and accept? Going back to my second slide, things that are no longer impossible, things that are now impossible, but that you can make a decision today to say, this is what it is. I'm going to accept that I can no longer do this and I will make peace with it. So 30 seconds, I'm going to drink some water and catch some breath. But I want to hear in the comment section, what are you renegotiating or what are you releasing? Before we go into the exciting part of what is still possible. So 30 seconds, please type away. I do want to hear from you guys. This is not a one woman conversation. This is about you. So I want to hear from you. These guys are still typing what they've had to renegotiate or what they've had to accept and release. Elizabeth yes. and Innie shared um, some of their biggest fears. And Elizabeth said that my biggest fears are losing any of my family members, not achieving my goals for this year, especially my financial ones, and my business not growing as much as I had planned. Mm. And Innie says, one fear of mine is not being able to keep up with class online. Right. Chansa, oh, we've got some responses. Okay. Um, Chansansa Kambi Kambi says, things that I am releasing, that I might not graduate in person, 
and have the full celebration with my schoolmates and family and friends who are supposed to travel. Elizabeth says I can definitely rene renegotiate the timeline of the plans that I had. Uh, Tariro Dorcas says uh, she's accepted the possibility of not going home within the next year, but is taking each moment I have, like you said, to love my family more and to reach out to people on a humane level through, through Zoom dates, WhatsApp calls, and simple messages. Musa says, I can no longer talk to my clients face to face, and that is having a toll on my businesses, but I'm now all right with that life goes on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing, you guys. And I love the fact that we are beginning to now. I, I think that accepting what's no longer possible is just as powerful as renegotiating what can still happen, right? Yeah. The thing is, the thing is, we are taking our power back. And this is the thing that I've been talking a lot about in this season to say it's easy for us to feel like we are powerless because there are all of these things that are happening that seem mm -hmm. like they're out of our control. But there are things that are within our control, even if it's accepting mm -hmm. that this is now impossible and I can't do it anymore. That in itself is empowering because you're no longer spending all your days looking at this closed door. You're able yeah. to now go around and still live the rest of your life. Chim and Ini say, so Chim says, I have renegotiated my goals by extending the timeline and also finding other alternatives to make them achievable. Uh, Ini yeah. says, I need to renegotiate my learning style from physical classes to online class. Yes, 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 yes. And that is the beauty because life can still go on. It can still go on. We might need to adjust, but it can still go on and it's definitely still going on. So now I want to talk about silver linings and opportunities. And I'm wondering, and, 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 and again, I told you guys this was going to be a very interactive session. I don't want to just throw theories at you. I also want to hear from you. So the next challenge now is what has been your biggest silver lining around COVID-19? What are you now able to do more of? What are you actually enjoying in this season when you forget to complain about what you can't do or the gloom or the fear of what's happening? What is the silver lining for you in this season? What are you enjoying? It doesn't have to be related to school. It can be anything, right? So I want to hear from this one, from everybody on the chart. What have been some of your silver linings? What are you now able to do more of? What are you enjoying more of? What are you seeing more of? There's a workshop where we had and the participants were like, oh, we can now see the blue sky. Because we're always so busy, we hardly ever notice the sky. So once again, chat section, what has been one of your silver linings from staying home, from school being closed, from everything that is happening around you? What is your silver lining? What are you enjoying more of? What are you doing better? What, what is giving you happiness in this season? Um, we have a response from Dylan, but this is in relation to what he's renegotiating. And he was saying, I was supposed to launch my first project at school, but because of the indefinite closure of universities, it's no longer possible that way. It will not be the same, but I could still use this time to do more research in order to better my project. Absolutely. In response to your silver lining question, Rhoda mm -hmm. says, my biggest silver lining has been getting caught up with schoolwork as well as doing more creative work such as baking, visuals, and knitting. And Mwiza says, I now have a lot of time to take on projects which I could not have embarked on before. Bob says, I have more time to read and learn things that I wasn't being taught in class. Mm. Um, like Tafadzo has said, you guys, I think everyone has some silver lining, so please share those in the chat section. Uh, Tariro says, um, give my book project more attention, work on courses I was neglecting, focus on my calligraphy, and definitely getting to spend more time in kitchen adventures. Yes. Yeah. Hi, what is one of your silver linings? I think definitely being able, for me, the silver lining has been being able to read a lot more. Mm. 
like I've been piling books. I'm one of those people that just keeps buying books and I'm like, oh, this looks really interesting because I see the cover. And then right. I start <laughs> and then I stop because of work or something. That and just being able to take more selfies and do more creative stuff. <laughs> <laughs> take more pictures uh that selfies are flames though. We love them. <laughs> them thank you <laughs> so so oh chim so says chim says my silver lining has been working on my project through social innovative capacity building programs um Mambwe says beginning of the year was on attachments and was set to report for school on the 6th of April, but schools closed. I did not report for school and might not complete school as scheduled, but I started a podcast, yay, to continue communicating. Please give us details. Yes. Uh, well, what to please thank you for your podcast. <laughs> to continue chat. communicating and sharing thoughts with others. I think that is the silver lining and the fact that I get to spend more time with my family and they are good people, hey? Um, Chileshia says. <laughs> now <we> realize. <laughs> um, Chileshia says, I now have time to revisit my plans and reset the goals and targets. Elizabeth says, schoolwork last year took away most of my time, so I couldn't spend time with family or indulge in anything creative. Now I can. Ini says, my silver lining is that I am able to work out longer every day. Chan Sansa says, my biggest silver lining is that I finished my research project and that I am doing more of cooking and baking, which I take as therapeutic. Love it. Love it. I love the fact that we are able to recognize our silver linings. A few things that I want to indicate about silver linings. One of my, per my personal silver linings um, is the fact that I get to, like earlier in the days, I used to stress and get very tense when I'm on a webinar and my son is living his life outside the room in his mother and father's house. And I used to really worry about, oh my God, people are going to think I'm unprofessional. And so I was in another webinar and somebody says, I love the fact that I'm actually able to hear my kids' voices when I'm working, right? And I was like, oh, that's actually so true. That is something that we are missing on. Silver linings are visible to people who seek them. And I'm sure that if you were listening to this list, I don't know about you, but I definitely had one thing that somebody else is doing that I wasn't looking at as a silver lining. So silver linings are visible to all those who seek them. We now all have more time, but it's only a few of us who are catching up on creative work. Some of us are now working on projects. Some of us are reading more and learning. Some of us started podcasts. And when Sekai says she's posting more selfies, Sekai is a creative, right? So her sharing herself is this part of actually her happiness, but it's also part of her work, right? So the thing is, silver linings and opportunities are visible to those who seek them. And I would challenge you after this session to also once again ask yourself, what is it that I'm now able to do in this season that I have not been able to do, right? So silver linings are utilized by those who decide to take them. We all have more time at home. Some people, when we go back to school, some people would be worse off than they were the last day of school because they never touched a book. Whilst some people will be much better because they've invested into learning. Some people will be in worse relationships with their family members because rather than spending time with their family right now, they're spending all their time online, scrolling, looking at things that add no value whatsoever to their lives. You have to step out of your default mode to maximize on silver linings. For some of us, our default mode might have been the fact that you spend your whole day at school, you're so tired, by the time you get home, you just want to sleep. For you to spend more time with your family, you have to step out of your default mode of saying, when you walk in through the door, which door? Some of us aren't even supposed to be going out. But the default, it's step out of your default to say, if your default is not to talk to the people in your home, step out of it and begin to engage people in your home more. If your default is to not read books because you're just so tired or you're just scrolling on social media, step out your default mode to take advantage of those silver linings. And the last thing that I would say is set intentions and commit to do what it will take for you to do that. I'm sure that even for the people who have been doing creative work, cooking more, there are still days when you don't want to cook. But if you have set the intention that I want to do better with my cooking in this season, it becomes a bit more easier for you to do that. 
So there's an abundance of silver linings and opportunities, and I'm excited to hear about all your silver linings. The only other thing that I would say is think around, is there another opportunity that I'm missing in my life right now? But the other thing that I would say to you is be intentional to make sure that no area of your life is going down the drain in this season. Now, I'm not saying go and do everything you have never done in your life, right? I'm saying as much as you can, protect the current status of your life. If you have good relationships, protect those good relationships. If you can make them great, but by no means should you allow your relationship to get worse in this season. If your health is in a good space, if you don't want to exercise to get in a better space, don't. But don't take yourself down the drain. Don't give yourself new work when COVID passes because you let yourself go in this season. Don't create new work, new challenges, new dynamics in your life in this season. Don't do things that will give you too much work in recovering when you're coming back from COVID. So the, basic, the bare minimum that I'm expecting of anybody in this season is maintaining the level that you are. If you have the emotional, mental, and physical energy, elevate the level of your life in all the life areas right now. So you might be like, but what other areas could I be working on right now? So these are the things that we could work on before COVID, right? We could improve our physical health and fitness. We could improve our spirituality, our family and friends, our careers. And I know that some students sometimes think and say, what career? I don't have a career. By already being in school and choosing to study something, you already have a career. You are already on your career path because you are choosing. Right now, you're gaining the knowledge that is relevant to your career. You could improve your academics, your personal finances, mental health and self-care, significant other or romance, personal development, fun and relaxation, physical space and surrounding and community service. These are some of the areas that impact how you live your life. And these are the things that we could work on before COVID-19. So the question now is, what are we still able to work on now during COVID-19? And I dare say everything. We are still able to work on everything that we were working on before COVID-19, before the lockdown, before school was closed. And let me explain, right? What this simply means is that we might no longer be able to go to school, but we're still able to acquire knowledge. We might no longer be able to attend lectures or class, but we're still able to learn skills that are going to be relevant to our careers. We might no longer be able to go to the library, but you still have ways of studying and catching up with your modules. You might no longer be able to see your friends, but now more than ever is a great time to socialize, connect, and support your friends. There are things that are no longer possible, but don't write off everything else because some things are no longer possible. And what we need to be doing now is going to the core of what is this area about for me? What am I trying to achieve in this area? And if I was to give a very quick overview of what are some of the things that are maybe no longer possible, but are still possible in this area. So I'm just going to share, maybe I'll look at the first six areas, right? Physical health and fitness. Some people used to play soccer and now they can't play soccer. But if you're able to go to the very core of the fact that you played soccer to stay fit, if you are committed to fitness, you can work out at your house. You can run around, like you can go jogging. We're still allowed to go jogging here, right? Mental health and self-care. You might no longer be able to go to get your nails done or go and get a massage or go and see a therapist if you saw a therapist or whatever your form of mental health and self-care is. But in this season, you can still take care of your body. Your mental health and self-care in this season might look like you and following some people on social media because they are throwing off your mental health with all their figures and opinions and perspectives and conspiracies about COVID-19. Self-care for you in this season might look like you still taking your vitamins or lemon, ginger, garlic, honey, whatever it is that you're taking care. You're able to still take care of yourself at that level. 
spirituality. We are not meeting at church, but you're still able to read your Bible from home, right? Significant other or romance. If you were with the bay together in college and now you've been separated, you can still stay in touch. You can still deepen your relationship. You can still get to know each other better in this season. You're you are able to sustain your relationship over distance. And people are like, it's a crisis. We are no longer together. Mm -mm. In a season, you're still able to cultivate all of these things. Family and friends, yes, we are not traveling, but it means we do have more time to do Zoom calls and WhatsApp calls. Personal development, if any of your personal development goals were aligned to things that are maybe related to school or a club that you were in, it's still a good time for you to invest into your personal development by getting other skills. So this was just my way of reframing and challenging you to think about in this season, how do I want to maintain? Bare minimum is maintenance. We will not allow anybody to go lower than when they were. We will not allow anybody to start getting yourself new goals by having to lose the weight that you gained during COVID or having to mend relationships that you ruined during COVID or having to get over bad habits that you learned during COVID. The bare minimum is maintaining where you are or going further ahead so that you can maximize in this period. Right? So looking at these areas, once again, my favorite part in the chat section, what two of these areas do you want to improve during COVID-19? We are on lockdown, school is out. But looking at this list, which two areas can you cultivate, improve, and strengthen in this season? So it's just two areas, and I will allow 30 seconds again so that we quickly put that in the comment section. Which two areas are you going to now work on during this season where school is out, there is lockdown, things are slowing down, but we still have power over so many areas of your life. And I'm not saying just focus on two. I'm saying choose two that you're going to say intentionally in this season, I'm going to focus on this. A third one, which is now, so a third one that I'm now saying, because we have Bongo Hive X webinars, your personal development is sorted, right? Because Bongo Hive is running webinars that allow you to learn skills. So by default, you're working on your personal development. You being on this webinar today means you understand and you're invested in, in cultivating your personal development. So outside of personal development, which are the two? If you had already put personal development on your two, put a third one. What are you working on? What are you cultivating in this season to ensure that you come out of this season much stronger than you were? So after that, um, we will begin to wrap up. I want you to leave a bit of time for questions. So write your two areas, then I'm going to open up space for any questions. So if you also have a question, you can type it in the chat section starting now. I will liaise with Sekai because I didn't get to something that I'm really passionate about and that everybody knows that I talk about, which is goal setting. Mm -hmm. um, so so you can come back. <laughs> you know, I do I do like Bongo Hive. So <laughs> let's talk Sekai. We could do a goal setting webinar. Um, oh, that would be great. In the month of May. We can do a goal setting webinar in the month of May. But um, for now, I would love to hear from you guys. Um, which two areas have you picked? And if you have a question, so Sekai, um, yeah. I can always look in the chat section to see what areas people chose. But for now, let's prioritize the questions. Okay. All right, guys, if you have your questions, please put them in the in the comment section so that we can get into, into that. Even Maretta is saying you have to come back, Tafatwa. <laughs> no, no, I love you. I'll come back for Bongo Hai. Come on, guys, share your questions. Oh, so Rhoda is asking, um, as an entrepreneur, how are you thriving or surviving during this time, Tafatwa? Right. So what I'm doing right here is part of my surviving and thriving. I am finding other ways to still disseminate information. We are hosting online courses. Um, so we, we are converting a lot of the, the training that we needed 
the trainings that we're offering in person, we've converted some of them into um, into online version. And I feel like I did. So as an, I did lose some business because of COVID, right? Because I couldn't go and do physical training. So I remember the first time that the impact of COVID hit my business was within a space of two days, I had six things canceled on me or before the people even wrote to me, I realized that they weren't going to happen. One of them, which was the Bongo Hive vision board party. I was supposed to host a vision board party for the Bongo Hive ladies. But in a space of two days, I literally lost that vision board party. I lost a speaking engagement, which was going to be really important in terms of visibility for us. And two clients who had all already committed to two full days of training canceled. So I literally lost six events within a space of 48 hours because of COVID. So that is, that is income that I never then got back, right? But I then had to find a way to pivot. And part of that pivoting was I didn't insist that I've already designed trainings. So I will push these trainings. Part of that is we had to re-strategize and say, what are the market's needs right now, right? So we had to, we had to say, what, is, what solution does our business provide? And how do we still provide the same solutions to the emerging problems, right? So now we have a lot more content around remote working, around managing, in, uh, managing remote teams, leading in uncertainty. So to, to, to shorten my answer to you, ask yourself, are there still people who need the product or the service that you're providing and renegotiate? How do I deliver that to them in a different way? So that would, that would sort of be like my very short answer. I had to renegotiate with myself. Uh, some things are totally, I had to release, but where possible, I still keep trying to renegotiate and finding new opportunities. Thanks, Tafadza. Um, Rhoda, I hope that that answers your question. But like Tafadza has shared her contacts, as you can see, uh, if you want more in-depth, um, a more in-depth answer to your question. Um, we have another question here from Tariro Dorcas, and her question is, well, she starts by saying, thank you very much, Tafadzo and Sakai, for this opportunity. My question is, as someone who used to have morning runs, what has been your alternative approach to that area of your life? And the second question is from Mwiza, who says, how can one use a period of uncertainty like this to create new business ideas? Right. right. So to answer Terry, Terry, you might not know, and don't tell the rest of the world. <laughs> but in Zambia, we are not on lockdown. We're just social distancing. <laughs> but <laughs> that being said, so I have not, uh, I was explaining to Sekai yesterday that when I unpacked my fears and my anxieties because of my asthma, one of the decisions that I made was I'm going to work from home and I'm not doing any social visits, which means that over the last five weeks, I only left my house during the day to go where I meet people when I had to go to immigration. Other than that, I've only been leaving my house to go for runs in the morning. And I now go for my runs very early in the morning to make sure I don't see nobody, I don't touch anything whilst I'm running. And I just put in my run, go outside, get fresh air. Um, but for your case, I know that you are under lockdown. Um, I think it goes down to just finding more workout routines. If you are clear on why you were running, I, I think for me, I was running for endurance and resilience, right? That's why I ran. So if we get to a point where I can't run anymore, because I'm clear that I do it for resilience and endurance, I would find other workouts that would allow me to build up endurance and resilience. If you were running to lose weight, find a workout that still helps you to lose weight. Don't just find an alternative so that you're doing something. Mm -mm. It has to be aligned to your goal. So for example, one of my goals is to get up. So the workouts that I do are aligned to that. I can't just jump onto everything that everybody else is doing. My personal goal is to have abs and a six pack. I don't know what I'll do with it, but um, I would find something that is aligned to my goal. So there are lots of workout options, but the first thing is clarify to yourself, why am I doing this? So that you find alternatives that actually help you to do that. 
The question about finding new business opportunities in this season goes into number one, if your business can still survive right now, um, this is a good time for you to spend time learning about how to improve your business. A lot of us start businesses because we are passionate or excited about an idea. Then we just start a business. And once we start running a business, we are so busy running the business, we don't even have time to come out and see how well am I doing this. So if you are running a business, if you already have a business, please use this time to invest into checking your systems, right? Even for the guys who are still in school, check your systems. How effective are your study sessions? How effective is your time management? Use this time to reflect on do you like the current results that you have in your schoolwork or in your business? And then secondly, look around um, and renegotiate some of your products. There are some products that we have because we love them. They are our babies. No, this is a business. Renegotiate with some of your products if you need to pivot them, shift them and see how to readjust that. Um, and also just look out for what are people looking for and needing in this season and how can I address that? So it's 12 o'clock. If there are no other questions, um, <laughs> um, I'll hand back to Sekai. We have one more question from Chilowekwa. Okay. And this will be the last question that we take. But Chilokwa says, how can one overcome fear and anxiety? I heard you speak about overcoming fear and anxiety. It seems the answers I'm getting on Google haven't helped and it has hindered my career development. I am always afraid of the unknown. I'm even afraid to graduate. Kindly help me overcome that. Right. So, so what I, one of the things that I covered and one of the things that I find, disclaimer, I don't speak of medical, medically diagnosed anxiety. Um, that is something that is way out of my scope. Um, if you have that deep level of anxiety, I do recommend that you get help, you get medical help, um, because that, that, that might be something that is way deeper and beyond my scope. But at a general level, one of the things that I have found, and I shared this earlier with the guys, was that being able to articulate my fears kind of begins to diminish them, right? So if, for example, you're afraid of graduating, are you clear on what exactly are you afraid of? Are you afraid of the comfort of leaving school? Are you afraid of not finding a job, which is a real fear for a lot of graduates across the world? Are you afraid of not knowing what to do next? Once you know what exactly you're afraid of, you are then empowered to know that for me to overcome this fear, I need to learn how to write a CV and acquire interview skills, right? I apologize, my child is a bit extra today. Um, but <laughs> once you are clear on what exactly it is that you're afraid of, it empowers you to seek the right help, knowledge and tools that will help you. So for you specifically about of being afraid of graduating, do you know what exactly your fear is? Once you articulate it, you can then make a decision to say, okay, to increase my odds of getting a job, what I can begin to do now is to join a club where I can gain skills, to begin to network now with people even in Bongo Hive or other people in Bongo Hive X, so that I learn how to write a CV, I learn interview skills and I can stand out or even do a bit more research on what are the different opportunities that I might have once I graduate. So my short answer to you would be, learn to clarify and articulate. I am afraid of not getting a job. I'm afraid of leaving the security of school. I'm afraid of this. Then you are empowered to begin to say, okay, so what I can do to alleviate this is one, two, three. Thank you, Tafadzwa. Um... I think Chilo Wekwa, we will have um, a session with a trained professional on anxiety that will help us go through that and have that conversation. So please keep uh, checking our website, join our community on Slack as well as on WhatsApp. I shared the link and I'll share it again. Um, but we will have sessions that address issues like this. Um, we have a couple of more questions, but we have to move to close. So. I will not read those out. 
Um, but I just wanted to say thank you, Tafadwa, for joining us today and taking the time out to to do this session with us. Um, I've seen a couple of thank yous and uh, thank you guys for being so interactive and being engaged in the session. Um, please follow Tafadzwa, follow Bongo Hive so that you can stay updated. Join our community on, on WhatsApp. I shared the link earlier, but like I said, I'll share it again. Um, I will share, I want to say Tafadzwa, thank you so much for, for taking us through the session. I've learned a lot. I know moderators like to say this, but that's true. Um, and I'm sure uh, everybody on the call has taken something with them. Thank you for sharing even your biggest fears, guys. That's so important. Um, so Tafato, any last words before we move to, before I close and say thank you to everyone? Well, before I close the meeting. Any final words? Thank you. Thank you, Bongo Hive, um, for putting together Bongo Hive X. Um, this is something that is really, really useful. I always think of the fact that, and I'm, and I'm sure some of the adults here might also remember a time when we look back at our university years and think, I could have done so much more in that time. So I want to give a special shout out to the students who are here because you guys are definitely investing into your personal development. And I want to promise you that such investments always, always, always pay off. So thank you for hosting us, Sekai. Guys, this is just the first one, and this is the least technical of the Bongo Hive webinars. So all the other ones that are coming are really going to like give you great, great, great skills and tools and knowledge and perspectives. So as much as you can, make a date and make sure that you join them. Um, I shared my details. Feel free to reach out. As a disclaimer, I'm terrible with Facebook Messenger. I'm a bit better with Instagram. And do tune in on Wednesdays, every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. We're on Capital FM 99.7. So, yes, it was a pleasure. And I do look forward to coming back here again and interacting with you guys. Thanks, Tafadzo. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Guys, we will have Tafadzo back, so please look out for that. <laughs> I just shared the links to all the webinars that we've had before. So we've had some webinars that are targeted specifically at entrepreneurs. I saw some of you mention your businesses and business ideas. So please click that link and go and check out some of the conversations we've already have, we've already had. Uh, join our WhatsApp community as well as on Slack. I'll share the link in our wow. WhatsApp group. Uh, Tafazza, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. See you during the next webinar.